Uh, I will solve one and two step equations by translating yeah. verbal um, statements into algebraic uh, conditions. Good. We're continuing with this whole algebra thing. And again, we have rolled in the, we're going to start with English and then turn it into the math symbols and work with it from there. I know word problems are your absolute favorites. You can go to that. They're your absolute favorite. The, the reason why word problems are hard is because suddenly we're using natural language and we've got to try to figure out what math symbols we're supposed to use. And all of our practice so far, translating, has been like really forcefully created sentences that are super easy to tra directly translate. Well, okay, not super easy. We're still learning how to do it. But it's easier than this stuff, okay? So I'd like to share with you six different ways you can use some strategies to help you figure out what these word problems are doing, okay? So let's start with drawing a picture. All right, let's read this word problem. The word problem says, Monica biked mm, miles. It's the proper word for the M. Mm, mm, mm. Monica biked mm, miles in the morning and another 8.5 miles in the evening. How many miles did Monica bike in the morning if she totaled 13.7 miles? All right, don't try to answer right now. We're not worried about the answer. We're just worrying about different ways we can figure out how to get the answer. Hi, stay with me, please. So we're going to draw a picture, okay? So let's show Monica on her bike. That is the best bike I've ever drawn. It looks like a scooter. <laughs> it does look like a scooter. We're just going to pretend it's a bicycle. Okay. So there's her bicycle. She starts off in the morning and she rides some distance. Mm. We're using M to represent the mm. And then after, after she has lunch and she hangs out with her friends or she's at work or whatever, she's getting ready to go home and she bikes eight point five miles and then she gets to where she's stopping there's our picture this whole total trip is thirteen point seven miles if you didn't know what to do just from reading looking at this drawing picture what does it look like you want to do subtract because this is the entire thing I know this piece so if I pull that piece off if I take this piece away, it'll leave me with what I'm actually interested in. So this is a subtract kind of thing. All right, don't actually do the subtraction yet. Don't do it. Let's rephrase this. <coughs> let's rephrase the problem. So let's say you've got a word problem in front of you. Drawing a picture isn't going to help. But let's maybe if we just write out the important bits of information, maybe we'll see something. All right, so we're going to rephrase it as some sort of miles in the morning. I'll try to spell morning, right? And then 8.5 miles in the evening at night. And then 13 miles in all. Does that give you a sense of what you might want to do? Does this feel like if I subtract, I would totally get an answer? What do you think? Yes. Yeah? This is another method you could use to find the solution. Again, we're not finding the solution yet. This looks like I want to subtract. And this was the kind of thought that we had in our head. Here's my little face, and I'm looking up at this. Mm. I'm thinking hard. Thinking. Mm. Yeah, over here. Oh, she knew. All right, let's look at the equation. All right, so here's my drawing. What's happening between these two to give me my grand total? I'm going to have to subtract it. I'm going to write this as an equation first. What's happening between these two pieces of the day? 
to give me the grand total. Excuse me. Yes? What's happening between these two pieces to give me a grand total? Because the way it's written, I can see why it looks like multiplication. But remember, she biked this distance, stopped, and then the bike some more. That's an add kind of thing. Yeah? So my equation would look like the miles in the morning plus the miles in the evening equals her miles total. All right, all of you say that the, what you want to do is you want to subtract. So go ahead and at this time do the 13.7, subtract 8.5, and tell me how many miles did Monica bike in the morning? Five point two. All right. So my solution, because my, and she's back. Because my problem was written as whole sentences, my solution needs to be written as whole sentences. So Monica biked five point two miles in the morning. Bites. Yeah, it's kind of a weird word, huh? Okay, let's look at three more different types of problems. I have Jasmine. Jasmine saves up $265. She's my hero because I can't even save like 20. So she saves up $265 in one month and then she spends I don't know how many dollars that's what the D stands for Duh, I don't know how many she spends that many dollars on a sweater from Victoria's Secret cool. if Jasmine has a hundred and eighty five dollars seventy five cents left after buying her sweater how much was the sweater yeah it totally feels like we should just subtract so I'm going to come here to the work backwards. So it feels like we should just subtract whatever she had left from whatever she had walked into the store with. So that's going to end up looking something like that. $79.25 is what she tells me. I'm assuming there were taxes in there. Let's figure out how we would guess and check. Assuming we didn't know how much she spent on the sweater, what would be your guess? Like, Looking at just the 265 and the $185. Más o menos, how much do you think she... Like $75? I'll give it to you in a bit. Like 70 but we don't know how much she actually spent right now. We're pretending we have no idea. So I had someone guess about $75. So I'm going to take my guess, and I'm going to go ahead and subtract it off and just see how close I got. So zero. That's pretty close. I mean, it's about $5 off. So this means that the sweater was about $80. And so if you're looking at multiple choice answers, you can erase the ones that aren't really close to $80. Because if you notice the difference between this amount and this amount is really close to $5. Which means my guess is off by about $5. Okay? So it's about $80. I'm going to add five more. That's where I got there. That's five. And again, I'm erasing answer choices that aren't really close to 80. Let's make a table. Because sometimes some of these answer choices, just these word problems, just seem easier to deal with if, if we line things up in a nice little table. Okay? So I'm going to make a table like this. This is the money that she has. And this is what she's spending it on. 
She starts off with $265 from her savings. Okay? And then she spends, she buys her sweater, and she spends some amount. Now, when she spends, it's a minus. So, when she's done spending, she ends up with $185.75 left. Can you see how this is where she starts? We subtract this amount to get this one. Hi, welcome to your checking account. So when you get older, you start having a job and you do direct deposit. You can go online and check your balance. This is how literally this is how your checking account is set up. They give you how much money you actually have. They list all the things that you spend your money on. And if you made money and they paid you, you would see it as a plus instead of as a minus. And then you would see how much you had left over after they added or subtracted however much money you may have spent or someone may have given you. Cool? All right, let's write our answer as a full sentence. Someone wants to suggest a sentence? Jasmine's sweater cost about $80. Okay, Jasmine's sweater costs about $80. And I'm going to put in parentheses the actual amount that we had calculated on the work backwards. All right. Sounds good.